Hello, welcome to the section of Mastering Statistics. In this section, we're going to talk about the topic of the Z-score in statistics. Uh, it is an extremely important topic because we're kind of introducing it here, but then in future lessons, in future volumes of Mastering Statistics, we're going to use the Z-score even more than we are in this lesson when we're doing lots and lots and lots of different kinds of calculations. So we're introducing it here, but just keep in mind the Z-score is going to be something that we're going to use constantly. Now, it has a weird sounding name. A lot of students see the Z-score. That, that must be hard. Really, it's just a weird name for something that's very, very simple to understand. Let me try to explain the Z-score to you verbally, and then I'll put something on the board that you might kind of see in a book, and then we'll work a couple of problems to kind of give you the hang of it. All right, so in terms of making it easy to understand, I want you to think about uh, grades in a classroom, because we all have experience with grades, especially when you get to college. You know, when a professor gives a test, um, you know, in high school the grades are, you know, 90 to 100 is an A, and 80 to 89 is a B, and so on. But when you get to college, everything is going to depend upon the average of the class test scores and the standard deviation uh, there. So basically you want to know, not necessarily if you got a 90 to 100 when you get to university classes, you really want to know how close are you to the mean. Are you lower than the mean? Well, then you didn't do as well as your classmates, and so that's not a very good test score. Did you score right on top of the mean? And if you did, okay, you did just as good as everybody else. You probably got a decent grade, an okay grade. Not a great grade, but if you got close to the mean or on top of the mean, you're doing okay. Now, if you got better than the mean, then you're doing better than a lot of your other students and you should pat yourself on the back. And if you blow it away and you smoke it and you get really far out in front of the mean, then you've aced that test when most of your classmates haven't. And so you know that you've probably got an A, for instance, if you get really far out in front of the mean. So what we want to do in this section is kind of quantify that. We would like to know, given some uh, population or some sample characteristics like mean and standard deviation, like for tests, for instance, and I have a certain score, I may want to know how far in front of the mean I am. And the easiest way to calculate that is how many standard deviations am I in front of the mean, or above the mean, or below the mean. That's what you really want to know. Because remember, it's not an absolute thing when you're talking about grades in, in, in like a college class. You want to know how close are you to the mean, are you below it, are you above it, and if so, how far above it and below it are you. So a lot of times, for instance, remember we talked and we said that if you have a data that's a normally distributed or we call it a bell curve shape or bell shaped, that data that's falling within one standard deviation represents 68% of the data. So if I have you know, a test score with a mean of a 50 and a standard deviation of 10, then I know that if I'm within one standard deviation plus or minus of that mean, then I'm with about 68% of the class is falling in that range. And we also said that if you're within two standard deviations of the mean, so if I did really well and got better than the mean by two standard deviations, then I've done, uh, you know, I've done very, very well because 95% of my classmates are gonna be falling between that value and then value two standard deviations on the other side. So if you can get two standard deviations above the mean, you're doing very, very well, because there's only 5%, because 95% fall there, so there's only 5% that did better than you. And if you get three standard deviations above the mean, then you, you should know that that's really on the tail of that bell curve, and you've done extremely well. So what we want to do is figure out how to calculate what we call a z-score to help us figure out how far above or below the mean we are, and it's going to be comparing it to how many standard deviations we have gotten above